If I can give you some key advice on how you can get into talking to more executives, decision makers, would you be interested? Well, you better listen to this episode. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. As you heard in the teaser, today I brought on one of our friends. He's an executive, actually a CEO, actually a business owner. And just like most business owners, we want to get access to those individuals. We want to get to them because they're the, you know, they're the ones typically making the decision. They have the money, right? So I want to bring my good friend Stu on today to chat and get some advice from him on how we can better position ourselves to get actually connected with these executives. But before that, as always, you know, I got to give some shout outs. I want to give a big shout out this week to Olger. Thank you so much for joining our group. I'm excited to have you. Josh, thank you so much. Excited for the comments and the things that you will share with us. Jeb, continue to hustle as always and happy birthday. So for all of you out there, if you want to join our private Facebook group, shh. It's called the Sales Evangelizers. You can find it on Facebook, the Sales Evangelizers. You can always go to our Facebook page, which is go to Facebook and just search for the Sales Evangelist. This way you can get information from us, updates, what's going on, get motivation, tips, quotes, and just some activities, what's going on behind the scenes here at the Sales Evangelist. But we have a great guest. I'll let Stu introduce himself. I won't take up much more time, but let's go ahead and dive into our episode. Welcome to the show, Stu. Hey, thanks, Donald. Good to be here. Man, I'm so excited to have you. I know you got some great information that you're going to share with us today. But before we dive into the episode, I want to get from you. Tell us about your coolest sales experience when you were the customer. You know, I had an experience just recently where uh, an ad platform was trying to sell to us and they wanted us to use their platform. And, uh, I had some really strong concerns, deal breaker concerns. And I thought going into the call that it would be fairly quick. I was going to get right to the point, tell them my reasons why it wasn't going to work out. And concern after concern that I brought up, and it wasn't that I wasn't willing to do a deal if we could get them resolved. I I was totally willing, but I went into it knowing that there was probably a couple concerns in there. We couldn't really get resolved. And Everything I came up with, all the different reasons why it probably wasn't going to work, they had really prepared. They knew, they knew exactly what to say and what was coming their way. And so unlike most times when I felt like I, sh- I could shut down a salesman because, you know, this isn't going to work out, guys, and here's why. <laughs> they had all the right answers, and it boiled down to how prepared they, they were. And it was just a really cool experience to go, wow, they just blew me out of the water and, and convinced me that this is the right thing and, and here's why. And it's already been a win-win deal with them. And I was uh, really adamant that it wasn't going to work out and even told my partner that it was going to be a quick call because there's, here's the reasons that he agreed. And so, you know, to have that type of an experience, um, having been in the, in the, on the sales side myself, was really neat. And uh, I think that's got to be the coolest one. I was, I was hoping to c- tell you, like, oh, this company took me on a sail on a trip to Alaska fishing or something <laughs> cool like that. But it was, I think just like that refreshing moment of like true traditional sales folks that work hard and prepare well can can get a job done and make deals happen. Not the old fashioned way. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that because it's a consultative sales approach they gave me and it worked yeah. but to be able to overcome those um, concerns I had so well was awesome this is like perfectly in line with what we're going to discuss today but before I jump into that too as well I know I got the audience and listeners on suspense here <laughs> for some of the questions I'm going to ask you but this one in particular I want you to give us like help set us up for you know why you why you're so perfect for this conversation uh, tell us a little bit more about what you do and your role yeah so i am um I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and it runs in the veins in my veins in my blood i'm a two-time entrepreneur i started get found com in 2008 in 2013 i started com, and in just over a year and a half we went from helping one university is now helping 225 and we're growing 
at an astounding rate of about 25 new universities a month with um, about a 40% close rate. It's been an exciting run so far, and we keep growing, helping uh, professors teach internet marketing by providing a digital textbook that we update each semester. We also have a simulator, the world's first internet marketing simulation that we sell. That is awesome. That is great. And, and before we go today, I want to get some more information how we can get connected with you on that. But as we jump into this, Stu, one of the things that you mentioned in the your opening there was that this sales professional was prepared. Most of my listeners, people who are listening to the show right now, they are entrepreneur sales professionals, new sellers or experienced veteran sellers. But one of the things that we all understand is that the key of understanding how to get to CEOs, CEOs makes a decision most time for companies. And they're the ones that can truly, truly are the ultimate decision makers. Sometimes depending on your product, mm -hmm. you have different levels. But one of the things that I wanted to ask, I'm sure you get all kinds of sales pitches or approaches. In your opinion, what makes a sales, a great sales approach or a great sales pitch in your, your thoughts? Yeah. Um, I think it's first off, a great pitch depends on the moment, then the approach, and then the product. Um, so if, if, I, if I have a moment and, and you can give me the right approach, you approach me the right way and you have the right product, then th th that's where the stars are aligned, aligned. But if you catch me in the wrong moment, then it doesn't matter how good your product is or how suave you are, you're not going to sell me. So being able to match those three things in the moment with the right approach and the right product, that's what's going to get more of my time and the chance for you to sell me and close me. I call you up and it's not the right time. What's the best thing that I should do as a seller at that time? First, acknowledge right away that you're calling me out of the blue mm -hmm. and that you understand that it's most likely not going to work right now. Mm -hmm. But tell me that you understand that. Help me feel that you get where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and that you're willing to set up a better time. But the, the reason that you're willing to interrupt my busy day is because you have something of such value that it's worth it mm -hmm. to talk later. To set up a time, say, I'm, I'm taking a minute right now because we got to talk later. This is that important. You know what I mean? If yeah. I'm busy, that's the way you're going to, you're going to get me my time later. And most likely it's going to require a lot of follow up. You know, the, I had this convert, I have a private Facebook group called the sales evangelizers. Shh. Uh, it's a, uh, it's our group on Facebook and sellers oh, come okay. there and they share their thoughts, insights, and we network and, you know, entrepreneurs and so forth. One of the questions that came up recently was on the concept, should you ask, when I make a cold call, is now a right time. And from what you're telling me, it seems like as a busy executive, it's more respectful for me to ask that. If it's not a right time, you're going to tell me. Because the fear is that some sellers think that maybe if I do so, then the, the entrepreneur, the business owner, the CEO will say, hey, you know, well, they'll always say no. And some people say, it was an interesting discussion because some people are saying, well, I don't think so. I think they'll respect that. But your thoughts as an executive? Yeah, so I say immediately you got to tell me what pain I have and how you can resolve it in a clear and concise way. I mean, take 30 seconds without giving me a chance. You can't take a breath because if you do, I'm going to tell you I'm too busy and don't have the time, right? <laughs> but you got to give me that, that 20 seconds of, okay, this person actually has something I need and they're going to, and because I do feel that pain that I just talked about mm -hmm. and I'm, but I'm busy right now. There's no way that's what's going through my head. Right. Yeah. And then you're going to end it with exactly what's going through my head. I know you're busy right now. Don't even ask them if they're busy or if this is a good time. I know you're busy right now. And I'm, I want to set up a time when we can talk more, when this is worth taking some time. And I know right now probably isn't a good time. If you say something like that, then if they do have time, they're going to say, actually, let's talk. I have a minute. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have time, they're going to say, because you've pointed out the pain and how exactly how you're going to solve that pain, they're going to say, yes, yeah, send me an email with an invite and we'll so and give me three times at work. You know, that type of approach using a tool like assistant dots, you can do, you can book appointments and get deals and you're not selling them on the spot. And it's not about sales. It's about helping me solve problems that I have as a busy CEO. Mm. 
Perfect. I love that, man. I think that's great. And and the fact that what I love about this too is what you mentioned about being able to speak to their pain, being able to speak to what you know what's really the need. One of the things that I find as a pet peeve of mine is, and and, and I was there. I made the mistake where I used the same can approach on everyone when I was selling, and I didn't understand or didn't do research. How how important is that? for that seller to come prepared for you. You kind of hit on this in your example earlier. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, if you can somehow help me relate to you really fast or show that it, you, you know something about me, it's going to take down some barriers that, I, that I'm automatically putting up as soon as I answer a call from a number I don't recognize, right? Yeah. Or, or get an email from someone I don't know. If you say something like, you know, I saw that you wrote the textbook Internet Marketing Essentials and that was co-authored with a PhD from Orton. That's very impressive. <laughs> you know, if you say something like that, flattery works, right? But it's not about just the flattery. It's about the fact that you, you took time out of your day to find out, to know things about me. Mm-hmm. And there are things that I care about deep down inside me because I gave a part of my life to that book. Yeah. Right. And that's going to help. Um, and so, yeah, I would say definitely uh, finding ways to better understand who I am, what my background is, is going to help. But like I said, you have to be so clear and concise if you're interrupting me anyway. And it's not, I mean, if we're talking now, now we've sat down, we're talking together, then we can be talk a little more in depth and go into things that you've learned about me and ask, you can ask me questions about details with my life or my career. But Mm -hmm. in that first call, it's got to be clear, concise, only my pain and only how you solve it. And when we can talk next type of approach, that's what I recommend. Love it. Love it. Now, what about voicemails? I'm sure you do. You return a lot. You get a lot of voicemails. Do you return voicemails? And if you do, why? I'm very seldom to all of them I ever going to reply to like call back mm-hmm. on a voicemail. You'd have to have a product that's really, really groundbreaking. <laughs> it wouldn't matter how smooth talker you were on the voicemail. Probably not going to get a, a call back, especially if we've never connected via email or LinkedIn or anything else before. So yeah. I would say what I would recommend to someone leaving a voicemail is that you just tell them, you know, Hey, I understand if you don't have time to ring me back, I'm going to shoot you an email and it's going to have some more information for when you do have a minute to look at. And by doing that, the, the human touch now comes into the email, and it's no longer a spam email to me. Mm-hmm. It's not about some email from some chump I don't know. It's some guy that actually, this guy that's emailing me already took time out of his day, cared enough to call me, and I was too busy for him. Now I owe it to him to at least read through his email, and if it's worth my time, I'll reply. Very good. I love that. You bring up another interesting point about LinkedIn. How do you best approach that? I'm not friends with you. How would you recommend that? Yeah. Um, if, if we're not connected on LinkedIn and you invite me to connect, mm-hmm. I need, again, a quick, concise, but I need more than just, I'd like to connect with you <laughs> on LinkedIn, right? Like, I heard you speak at this conference and it touched me. It changed the way I think. Thanks. I'd like to connect on LinkedIn. Now I'm in. Now you got me. You connected with me at a higher level than just I'd like to. I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. I think is what it says. Yeah. And um, you know that's that's where you're going to get me willing to take time to connect with you. But if, here's an, I want to add one more point on LinkedIn while we're on the subject. Yeah, let's do it. I never ever respond or care to talk to anyone who I don't know from Adam that I decide to connect with on LinkedIn that then goes straight into their sales pitch on the first message (laughs) they send me on LinkedIn. That's not social selling. Okay. (laughs) There's nothing social about a relationship where just because we connected now you can pitch, you can pitch me your product. Um, You've got to take time to, it connects with me on a different level before social selling is going to work. And, uh, you may email me and just say, Hey, thanks for connecting. Hopefully we can help each other in the future. Um, and then a week later, like just do something to not seem so spammy. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it makes sense. It totally does. I mean, I think the, commu- the, the human approach there, this is what I, I get from it too. As a sales professional, as a new sales rep, one of the challenges I had was in my mind, I'm thinking that I need to get a sale. I need to get quota. I need to get this. So I have to, I made contact with him. He's live. He's a, he answered to me. He must want to buy everything from me. So now as a seller, I say, well, blah, 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 blah. But you're totally right. You need to, you need to slow down. You need to chillax and just kind of realize this is a, this is a relationship that we're building here. And we need to make sure that I'm offering value and that I'm not just trying to, to spam you with stuff. Cause I get that too. And it's annoying because I, I, I hardly respond to those. I, um, I mean, as a seller, I have sympathy sometimes, <laughs> and I would say no, not interested. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it doesn't build any relationship. But the approach is where people, you know, they like you said, they they do a personal approach to me. I mean, I, am I I'm like the easiest person out there. I have a bunch of stuff, and you are too. With the fact that you're very web um, friendly, I mean, you can find mm-hmm. a podcast or whatever, or find blogs that you wrote. And I think you know, going deep and building the personal understanding of you is great. Or your about me page, you have a great about me page, and you show your family and stuff. So mm-hmm. I think that's a that's a great way as well. So I, I love that. Yeah. You can level with me on on things like my if I if that's what I if that's what a guy shows off on his about about me page mm-hmm. is his family, then when the timing is right, you're going to talk about his family. Probably not on an initial cold call, yeah. But on the second and third touch, and those types of things can can go a long way in building the relationship. And what I think with people when they think social selling, they're just like, there's so many people out there, I can get access to all of them and make money. That's not how it works, man. It's mm-hmm. the, the idea there is, is strategic. And I think that's what the what most people don't understand is strategy, being very strategic on how you approach an individual. It takes time to build to before you can just get there. You know, it's like when people yep. say, if I can get everyone in China to buy something for one dollar, then <laughs> I'll be a billionaire. Well, it's probably not going to happen, but, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, you got to take, it takes time to build something that's going to be a value for people to want to invest in you. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. we spoke a lot about voicemails, about emails as well. You kind of hit on that. What, what about emails that makes them, makes it benefit for, beneficial for you um, that someone, you know, is going, that you're going to return a salesperson's email or reply to it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think that you've got to give me some, you got to give me something here. What, like, tell me, spark my interest, do something different that I don't read in every other sales email, do something that's going to make you stand out and, and deserve my time, whether that's, you know, you, uh, you link to a, a video that's going to only take a couple minutes of my time. And after I watch it, I can respond to you about what I saw and, and let you know if it fits for what we're doing or if it's worth talking more about, uh, guys, I got to tell you that it's, when it comes to an email, you, you, it doesn't matter how creative you are and what you write, you've got to have a product that's going to make the difference. Mm-hmm. And, um, that's going to make, make it worth my time. And so in, in that case, what I'm, what I'm telling you, you salesmen out there today right now is, are you selling a product that is making it easier for you to sell? Because if you're, if you're selling a, a product that's been around forever and, and, and I can go get it from 30 other companies tomorrow, then I don't have time for your email. But if you're one of a few companies that does it, and and you do it well, and you have reasons that you can line out in a sh- in a short, concise email. That's going to go far for me. And and when I say short and concise, guys, you might get a better response out of a one or two liner email with a, a a subject line that gets me to open it than you will out of a four paragraph email that's really outlined and talks about all the details of what you do. Um by for for a couple of reasons. One is again, you show me you respect my time by keeping it brief and to the point. And uh on the and and also if if you can't be that concise, I start to worry that it's gonna be take way too much of my time to get get going down the sales cycle with you. Mm. And I th- I think that makes total sense there with the uh... The idea of short and concise, and I think it goes back to what we were talking about with the other one, is don't try to kill it on number on the first one, 
on the first thing. It's just like with dating or with anything else. You're not going to, you know, only you, you're probably not going for a kiss on the first date. So you, you want to make sure that you go ahead and set it up. You got to recognize that this is a relationship. This is a long term approach that you're going after. I love what you mentioned as well that it doesn't matter how creative or eloquent of a Shakespearean writer you might be or Mark Twain. I'm not going to read that book. Keep it short. Keep it concise. Two sentences. Mm-hmm. And I imagine what might be powerful in there is, you know, like again, a, a sh- the something that's going to grab you, the attention getter, the email subject line, or maybe a thought provoking question that elicit the pain, or maybe something that in you know, and you can if you can describe the pain in two, two par- two sentences or whatever. I feel that, you know, the approach is when I've done that, when I've sometimes if I got referred by them, I use that in a subject line or or something. Somehow I can make that connection or just describe a challenge. And I do that in two sentences. And then next email is like, yeah, let me learn more. I set up an email invite. And then next thing you know, I have a conversation with them and I go deeper. Um, and is that something that you kind of refer to there a little bit? Yes, exactly. You're right on. Yeah. So multiple step approach with that. Now, I know mm-hmm. we, I want to respect your time and we have a few more questions. Um, is it okay if we continue to go for a little bit? Yeah, let's do this. Man, you got some good stuff coming out here, man. Uh, creativity, I know that's important. Obviously, it doesn't matter how, again, how big of a Mark Twain writer you are. How important is creativity, though, in the approach um, for potential sale? You kind of mentioned this, alluded to it a bit in the couple questions yeah. back uh, where, you know, do get some information, but creativity. Are, have you had, ever had any creative approaches that someone came to you, or how important is that to you? Yeah, creativity gets you in the door. Like a resume gets you an interview, man. Yeah. Then, then your product matters, and and how you show me the product matters. Get creative with that part of the approach. What do you mean by um, that? Yeah. So on, I mean, if, if I've given you time, if I said, yeah, I actually have 15 minutes right now and you can just chat me a link or email me a quick link to a join.me and you can screen share and show me the product in action and you know how to get around in your product really well. And it's, a, it, it, that type of stuff can go a really long way. Even if, even if you're like, well, my product is tractors. Okay. Well, you've got, videos, send me links to your videos that I can watch before we have our conversation of those tractors in action. If you've got, do something to show me that product in a creative way that makes me go, wow, that product's really cool. And part of what actually is cool about the product is how you're displaying it to me. Mm. That says a lot about you as a, as a company and as a salesman. And so there's big different ways. And, and those Heck, webinars, that's really not that creative. Webinars have been around for a long time, but that pop-up screen share and just go right to work can help you. And um, you may not have, it may be for nothing more than looking through the pricing together yeah. on the same screen. So you know you're looking at the same thing. Those will help. And then creativity come, comes into your pricing model and promotion mm-hmm. and how you, show, how you show that at the end Ooh. when you're getting closer to the close. You got to get creative there. That's that comes with as we and I talked about at the very beginning of our call here today in this recording. I just I think that if you plan ahead and you come prepared, you're going to have pricing and and you're going to have it set up in a way that it's easy to understand. And I see the value of it. Mm-hmm. I see the, I see the reason why it's worth it for me to commit and, and move forward. Stu, we've gone about, you know, past 20 minutes chatting and it's the first time that you brought up pricing. How important is pricing to an executive or to a business owner compared to value? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> and I would say that it's secondary. I, and, I, and maybe in part just from the fact that, hey, we've been talking 20 minutes about sales and pricing didn't even come up. But um, it's, it's so secondary. Because, and I think uh, one thing that salesmen can learn, especially young salesmen, mm-hmm. that what your pocketbook is like and what my pocketbook as a company and as a CEO is like is very different. So you got to shift your mindset from, man, I, I, I just dickered. I just thought twice about buying the $3 box of cereal instead of the $2 box of cereal at the <laughs> store, right? Like you got to get out of that mindset and start thinking about five grand versus seven grand in the grand scheme of things for a multi-million dollar business is nothing. 
it doesn't make any difference whatsoever on their bottom line. Mm-hmm. Right? Multi-million dollars, and you're talking about two grand a difference, it's not very much. They're going to worry much more first and foremost about how it's going to help them make more money or do their, or save them money or do business faster and better. You know, that's what matters to them first and foremost. Sure, price matters. And yes, there are multimillionaires and billionaires that still bicker on price. <laughs> but but what I'm what I'm getting at is the fact that if you're not the cheapest, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Show me the value, and that's what's gonna and that's what's gonna win you the deal. Be well, much much. I don't know how to say this. I'm like being eloquent here, but the fact is, there's other things that matter more than just price. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that's eloquent enough. It, it makes total sense there. And one of the challenge you mention is to get out of the, your your own way, so to speak. And I find that with you know new sellers, and I even find veterans, man, they've been around for a while, but they just like they they never talked about money with their family, so it's kind of tough to to talk about money. I'm like, get out of it, man. Just come on. These guys are they, they talk money all day. Don't be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, now. Uh, this has been great, by the way, man. And if you're listening to this episode, I highly recommend that you go back through and listen again. There's so many good gems in here. We're going to have great details in our show notes that you can get access to. But I mean, go back through and listen to it. It's, it's going to become one of the classics on the podcast. Now, how about your internal sales folks, um, Stu? How, let's talk about that for a second. What are some of, and I, if they're listening to this, I, I hope it's okay. <laughs> well, what are some of the main challenges you faced um, with, sales, uh, with sales as a CEO or especially with your new sellers, because your business is, uh, you know, you, you, st- you had a startup company and I'm mm-hmm. sure you've gone through different levels of, of selling uh, sellers. So what are some yeah. of the main challenges you came across? Our salesmen are really good. So the, the challenges are few, but uh, getting them to take the time it takes, it's a, it's, a, it's a sacrifice for them to help us as a company grow, to use the CRM correctly. Mm-hmm. And whether that's Insight or your Salesforce, whatever CRM your company uses, I, I think it's really important that you take the time to organize your information and data. It's going to later help the company generate more leads for you and do more for you on, on an automated marketing level when you've done a good job managing your CRM. So for us as a, as a young startup, that's been really important to get our data in order. And then... Um, the other area where any, I think every sales team can, can improve is follow-up. Um, mm. Don't just turn and burn. If they don't respond right away, that doesn't mean just forget about them and move on and never go back. We got we to gotta keep going through. And, they, and our, we only have so many customers we can go after. So following up with each one until we have a no or a yes is really important. That's so good. And then when we get a no, let's follow up again three months later to see if things have changed. You know, like, Follow up is key, and that's where your CRM comes in. Your, you know, your mm-hmm. Insightly or your Salesforce. By the way, Insightly and Salesforce are not sponsoring this episode, but if they, you'd like to, just reach out to us. Just kidding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, yeah, it's great totally, tool. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big data guy myself. I love tracking information because I. We're working on an episode that's coming up in the next several weeks. It's called Voodoo Selling. <laughs> so, and how some companies, they just go out and, you know, it's kind of like they do voodoo. They're just kind of like, let me just see what's going to work. Let me throw these feathers in the air and see how many deals I'm going to get this year. But use mm-hmm. data, use metrics, use analytics. And that's information come from your your past years and also through, you know, your your uh, research that can help you to make better by, uh, planning on what on what your your ideal income level will be by the end of the year as opposed to wow you know we spent less than we earned you know you want to make sure you have good information so that's that's an upcoming yeah. episode now there are a major, major a lot of great things that you described today you shared with us um, Stu what's one major takeaway you'd like listeners to walk away with if there's one thing that they could leave and implement today I think the one thing that I this could become a quote for the ages. I don't know about that, but <laughs> here it is for you, Donald. It's creativity will get you in the door, but product and pricing will close the deal. And uh, along with some good follow up, but really creativity gets you in the door and product and pricing help you close the deal. So Steve Young is a great quarterback, right? Sure. Yeah. Jerry Rice, but Jerry Rice made him the greatest in his, in his time, 
he was the greatest on the field. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's because of the combination of if you've got a, if you're a great salesman but with the wrong with the wrong company or wrong product, mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta start thinking about changing. Uh, and Stu Kent's a great company to work for. Wink, wink. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, you can be an awesome salesman, but if your product sucks, you're just not going to be great. You're not yeah. going to take it to the to the greatest level. And so that creativity will get you in the door, and your charisma is going to help. But product and price and close the deal. I love that. I'm going to put that in our show notes, and I'm definitely going to put a link to Stu Kent. So if any sellers out there are looking for an awesome company to work for, you can check them out. I only bring people on that I really highly respect. And ladies and gentlemen, Stu is one of those people that are on Donald Kelly's hero list. So I look up to him and I think that you can definitely learn a lot from him. Even if you don't work for Stu, you can definitely connect with him and, and follow him and you can, you'll learn a lot. I should have said this on the call, sorry. But I'm recording honestly, it. I'm going to put it in there. <laughs> okay. I honestly appreciate when they bug me a little bit. Silver, I mean, CEOs, are just busy people and very often salesmen think, oh, he's ignoring me. On purpose, he doesn't want to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And no, C- CEOs juggle so many balls in the air at the same time mm-hmm. that it's very frequently not about the fact that they're ignoring you. They just don't have time and they're waiting for you to connect with them when they actually do. And when they actually do, then they're going to respond and take time for you. When it, when it's like annoying because I, I, I get paralysis by analysis. Sometimes mm-hmm. you get too busy thinking about weighing your options. And so sometimes the person that gets the deal is just the one who was there enough. Yeah. The, the one who came to me enough times and, um, it caught me at the right time when I decided, you know what? I'm going to go with this guy because I don't want to take time to go talk to another guy. And this guy show, has shown me he really wants the business. And, and sometimes that's the only difference between picking between company A and company B. Wow. And so many times we think, oh, I'm pescering them. I'm, I'm being a pest, so I'm not even going to do anything. Um, you just, you, that just validates that you need to keep moving, keep going. You do. Yeah, it's, it does make a difference. And until they're telling you, hey, you're annoying me, it's bugging me, you're probably not bugging them they're, they're probably too much. Probably haven't seen your last 15 emails because they've been traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It got buried. They get so many emails, they don't even respond to their own employees' emails. It's, it's almost probably like Twitter, you know, where, <laughs> oh my goodness, nobody responded to my tweet. Well, it's moving like <laughs> 10,000 tweets <laughs> exactly. per second. So. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly right. (laughs) Well, that's great, man. I love that. I'll add this in there. Cool. Cool, man. Glad to help with that because I think that's really valuable insights for salesmen that are struggling and thinking, oh, I can't bug people. Now, what are some of the current projects you're working on, Stu? Uh, You know, we're expanding our sales team and adding new products to our courseware so that we are, in in turn, that helps us expand our total addressable market that we're going after. Because we just launched this week five social media case studies. So we're not just doing teaching internet marketing in general, but social media as well. And we want to expand that courseware. So those are the two biggest projects for us right now is expanding our courseware, uh, and we also struggle with development and things like that. Sales and don't get as excited to hear about the code behind our website and things like that. But that's, <laughs> that's another struggle and another part of what we're working on, a big project we're working on right now. So. Are you guys, I know you have plenty of business that you're probably taking advantage of in North America, but do you guys have ambitions to go worldwide or to look at Europe? Yeah, we have, uh, we're in Australia, Canada, Mexico, and uh, we have a partner in in Europe as well. So we've we've already done quite a bit of mm-hmm. um, global work, but then most of it's been in English. The only other language besides English that we've translated into so far is Spanish. Okay, nice man. Well, Stu, we enjoyed having you on the show today. You brought us ton of knowledge, and we truly appreciate and respect your time as well. So, thanks so much for coming on the show. What's the best way for us to stay in touch with you if you want to get connected with you and Stukind? I am at Stu underscore Draper on Twitter, and I am uh, on LinkedIn all the time. Happy to connect there as well. Just give me a good reason. 
<laughs> Don't just say, I'd like to add you to my professional network. <laughs> yeah, Stuart is spelled S-T-U-A-R-T. So just search for Stuart Draper on Twitter or LinkedIn and you'll find me. Awesome, Stu. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it, man. All right. Have a good one, Donald. Thank you. As I mentioned, Stu brought it and he brought more and he brought some good stuff. Listen, this is great information, but you got to apply it, especially the stuff that he shared today. You got to apply this stuff because this is the way we're going to improve. Some of you have been selling for quite some time and we know we, we can all improve, right? Some of you are brand spanking new. You're fresh. You're wet behind the ears. Take the information. Don't just listen and then put it on the shelf, but take it and apply it. I guarantee you, you'll see a difference when you apply it. I hear success stories. I've seen them myself when I apply these things. I learn a lot and I take them and apply them too in my world of selling. So I highly encourage you to not just sit back, not just take it and go forward, but you know, really, really go and apply it. You can stay connected with Stu. I'll put all the information in our show notes. You can go to salesevangelist.com. Again, that's a salesevangelist.com. You can find all the information there. You can get connected to us. You can also find me on Twitter, Donald C. Kelly, Donald C. Kelly on Twitter or on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Love to find out what's going on with you, how the things are working that you learn from the show. How's your dog? How's your cat? Whatever. I'd love to hear from you. But most importantly, I want you, yes, you listening, I want you to go out and do big things. <laughs> 